Hello everyone, Merry Christmas to you all. This will be my last video for this year and I thought we would do something a little bit more reflective than usual. Uh, there will be a little technical aspect to this. Uh, I'm still in the world of Linux which is good but I'm also running Delphi as well so we're going to chat a little bit about how I did that, why I did that, um, and maybe why I think this matters a little bit so um, it's not going to be a tutorial in the traditional sense it's just more of a walkthrough about um, how we got to this particular point here so uh, obviously I had you know the very first thing was well actually I saw a video on um, one of the videos on Code Raid was talking about um, running Delphi on Linux and using using dockers and that um, well I hadn't uh, tried that particular path before um, I found that particular path to be a little bit uh, flaky in my own setup doesn't mean it won't work for others so I had to go down a slightly different path and for me that was using uh, QEMU uh, and then installing Windows so um, created the virtual machine uh, went through all that process of installing you know, updates, drivers, um, etc and once that was done it was a case of um, installing Windows and then the fun started with removing all the unnecessary junk so necessary uh, but it's at a state now where it's um, fairly usable I mean like I got rid of OneDrive I got rid of the telemetry stuff as well um, fixed up other settings you know which Windows can get in the way when it wants to run an anti-malware or some other update when you would rather be doing it something else but um, things that you know chew up your CPU when you don't want them to um, and uh, once that was done I would then be in a position to install Delphi um, obviously um, getting Windows though to that state where I was in where I was happy with it running on Linux took a little bit of time um, and if you want to compare Windows to Linux and this will is where Windows tells sort of like tells you who's in charge so um, anyway so then uh, installing uh, Delphi that was more of a case I used the uh, Windows or sorry the web install for that one so I didn't download the whole thing and I just you know once it got to a certain once I you know entered my license details I could almost walk I think I did actually walk away from it that night and came back the next morning and it was all there um, over here in Australia where I live in, in you know, even though I live in a capital city our uh, internet is not as fast as some people's you know like in America so but um, it's rather uh, now the uh, environment or the Delphi environment the Red Studio environment is uh, reasonably uh, fast I will say the very first time that I ran it it was um, a little bit slower but that could also be because of other updates that may have been happening at the time which I was also playing around with trying to you know get things to how I wanted them to be uh, the one thing which did trip me up was to do with the uh, storage disk and uh, network setup and uh, when I say that I'm talking about using um, Virt.io for the uh, system disk uh, from what I'd read that was the preferred choice um, I'm using SATA and for me I'm not quite sure why at the moment um, but um, if I do try to use a vert IO um, bus I think it is then I'm just going to get you know the a well Windows is not going to boot and um, wants to go into recovery mode so I've had to put that back to SATA, you know, so that I can um, basically use Windows to be able to use Delphi here. Um, 
the it does work vert io does work with the network so uh, that's a positive um, so there are some things which I still need to do I will say and one of those things is to set up like a shared disk um, if for lack of a better uh, or a sh share folder um, and I'll probably use uh, Samba for that um, that will enable me to you know, write code for Linux through um, Delphi and be able to run it on a different platform there so um, so I think one of the videos um, now that I do have Delphi running you know in my setup here I will be able to at least uh, do a um, let's, let's call it the first impressions of, Ra of Rad Studio 13 um, not quite sure when but you know that's certainly going to be on the cards but um, even you know in its current state, the um, setup that I've gotten here is usable. I don't have any other um, modules installed, and this is a, uh, for lack of a better uh, description, a plain vanilla version of Rad Studio 13 um, running on running on Windows um, on Linux. So there we go for that one. So I guess the question you might could the question you could ask me here now is why did I bother with any of this? Well, the shorter answer is because I can, um, but the longer one would be um, well, um, partly because I get a little bit uh, irritated or tired that you know people must I'm um, abandoned the tools that have proven themselves you know, over a long time um, and I've also seen in tutoring and when I'm mentoring uh, students in coding that um, they can struggle with the basic concepts like variable declarations and types and what lives where in memory and so on so and I don't think this is because they're incapable but because um, of the tools they start with or like hide those ideas and this isn't too slight in you know, other language because if there was the perfect language we'd all be using it and the thing is Pascal doesn't hide all of these things it actually teaches them um, and I think then if you can understand these fundamentals you know it helps you to write you know better code and that's regardless of whatever language you use uh, it's about choosing a tool, you know, which uh, respects the machine and the developer. But um, so, if we look ahead to next year, what we would uh, look at doing? Um, well, some respects, not too much is changing. In some respects, you know, there are going to be um, a couple of new things. Uh, I've got. As you know from the previous video, we've got a book that I'm making my way through. Uh, the only comment I will make at the moment is on a couple of programs. The descriptions don't quite match the code, but you know we'll come to that you know in the next video or in another video. Uh, Again, hopefully I'll be doing a, uh, having a chat with the developer of Cortex Pascal. Um, we'll also be doing some videos in Delphi as well as Lazarus now, so um, go that one. Uh, news, as I, you've been seeing recently, to let you know about new developments, and this will obviously, and this is both in the, uh, let's just call it modern Pascal, which encompasses let's say Cortex, Pascal, Free Pascal, Lazarus, Delphi and so on um, but also um, with uh, Jim who is a you know you would have seen one of the earlier videos a former um, Embicadero Delphi advocate I think or advocate we can say is that we will be doing a series let's call it on mental health for developers where um, it's not going to be therapy, there's no productivity hacks there, um, we're not going to pretend that coding's always fun, we're just going to be having conversations about careers in software development and um, the associated pressures associated with that. Um, 
because we've been around long enough and you know we have our own stories that we might be sh we can share here it's not to fix anyone it's just to acknowledge that you know um, hum we are people we build software and that we need space rest and perspective so um that's about it for this video i'll say um so got delphi running on linux now another year is done and 2026 is not too far away and if you're still here um, listening and still building uh, software applications tools quietly and thoughtfully then you're exactly who this channel is for so I hope you all have a good Christmas take care of yourselves and um, we will see you in the new year bye